whether it's the New York Times, whether it's the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, the Associated Press, you name it, the headlines are replete everywhere. Global warming believers are feeling the heat. That's the London Telegraph today with James Dillingpole. As Germany gets caught at working with the White House to try to block news that all of their climate models are manifest frauds, that they have been trying to keep the fraud from the public. Now, for our longtime listeners, you're going to go, tell us something we don't know. We heard your guest on 10 years ago about the climate models being a fraud. The last five years, six years, we probably heard Lord, Lord Moncton 50 times on your show with his science and public policy website showing the documents. He's the guy that helped get out the emails showing climate gate fraud. He's the guy that helped bring out the fact that Pachari heading up the climate deal was shutting down plants in England, shipping them to where he owned them in India. It's a deindustrialization move to China and India where the globalists are in control with robber barons on top of it. I want to go to Lord Moncton instead of singing his praises. The point is he's been a devastating technician of liberty with the sword of truth slaying massive dragons. And he's a rock star to me. I mean, people that are effective against tyrants, because I take these tyrants personal what they're doing, doubling my power prices in Austin, shutting down all our clean burning plants, uh, brainwashing kids, ignoring all the hundreds of real environmental issues that are real problems, uh, big oil and the Saudis funding the shutdown of coal because it's competition to them. You know, I want to use our energy resources. I don't want to go to Saudi Arabia. And I'm sick of being told I work for oil companies when it's the opposite. They work for oil companies. So Lord Moncton joins us. This is a short segment, long segment coming up. He's always somewhere different. He goes to these big climate conferences. But this is the excuse to take over the world by taxing the carbon cycle. And it's bigger than climate gate that, that it's a concerted fraud. They've known it's a fraud. I mean, folks, they take the sun out of the models, okay? Uh, I mean, it's ridiculous. They've been caught faking the temperature readings. And now it's all admitted they are routed politically, but they don't care. They're still going forward. Lord Moncton, we've only got four minutes to break, but how big is what's happened? I mean, this is, I think this is champagne time right now. Alex, you're right. The scare is over, but not that they're going to admit it just yet. Here they are just about to come up with yet another of these big multi-thousand page lie-packed documents trying to say that it's all terrible, it's worse than ever we thought, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, this is chicken little on a grand scale, but the truth is that it's all over by the shouting. They've now had to admit that for 16, getting on for 17 years, there has been no global warming at all. None of their models predicted that. So the models are now completely out of the window. They've also had to admit that the consensus that they try to tell us with 95% confidence is 97% of all scientists. It now turns out on a careful measurement by their own side to be 0.8. Three <laughs> percent. Uh, that's all it is. 0.3 percent of all the 11,940. The complete polar opposite. 180 degree difference. Correct. It's 0.3 percent. There's now no doubt about this because this survey was done by their own people trying to prove there was a consensus. When they published it, they said it's 97.1 percent. But in a peer-reviewed paper, I and others did the homework. We got hold of the author's own data file and we found that they had marked only 0.3 percent of all the papers as, in fact, saying that, yes, most of the warming since 1950 was caused by us. And here's the big one for me. Let's put the Daily Mail up, but even the BBC had to admit this. Top global warming scientists caught in meetings desperately trying to hide the decline, not just in the emails, but now in government c conferences. It's extraordinary how they have tried to deny. I mean, if you want to talk about who the climate deniers are, these are the people who have been trying to tell us global warming is terrible and it's getting worse. And the fact is that according to the RSS satellite data set, there has been no global warming at all for 16 years, 10 months. That's 
uh, a lot of months now, there's been no global warming at all. Zero. And Lord Zilch, Christopher never, Monkton, yeah. now, now they've flipped, though, I want to come back from break, and now they're saying global freezing, which actually might be true uh, if we don't get the carbon dioxide level up, correct? That is indeed always possible, and all the solar physicists and now several mathematicians who've done some work on the cumulative influence of the sun are saying we could be in for some very serious global cooling just in the next two or three years. It is a possibility. That's not good. Boy, I tell you, especially with food production slipping, thanks to all the carbon taxes and stuff, we're going to have a lot of starving people if that happens. We'll be right back with Lord Christopher Monkton. We'll break down how to defeat these criminals. It's the only word to describe them. Jakari Jackson here, and I want to talk to you for a second about water. You know about ProPure, our flagship water purification system. But check out some of our portable water filter products at InfoWarsStore.com. The clearly filtered water pitcher. Also, for those of you on the go, we have the Athlete Edition filtered water bottle and the RAD Eliminator Pro Filtered Sports Bottle that removes radiation. And keep in mind, we have replacement filters for all of these products. The ever-popular grab-and-go bag favorite, the Life Straw, the Crystal Quest Shower Filter System, and the Aquapod Kit, great for mass storage of water. And while you're at the InfoWars shop, pick up a copy of our latest book, 31 Days to Survival. You can find all this and more at the InfoWarsStore.com. And don't forget, it's your support that funds our operation. Sign up for our free newsletter at InfoWars.com forward slash newsletter. I, I want to hear from you. And we've heard, I'm poor, I'm destitute, I want free health care. You already get free health care. You can already go in charity care. Now they're going to ruin everybody's health care. And I want to get Lord Monckton's take on socialist health care because he's lived under it in England. He's in England right now, but he is the global leading champion of truth when it comes to exposing the power grab that ignores all the real environmental issues and sets up the UN and select Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Ken Lay of Enron with Al Gore, develop the plan to tax carbon dioxide. There's four things in the life cycle, sunlight, water, carbon dioxide, oxygen. You've got to have those four things. Well, you got to have a heat source. Sometimes it's volcanic heat, but then you got to have the other three, the water, the carbon dioxide, the oxygen. But for general life on the planet, it's the sun. And the UN's done stuff like five years ago, vote, to say we exclude the sun as an engine, because Lord Moncton and others were pointing out, as well as top climatologists, that it was the sun. Stupid. Not carbon dioxide. And that, and that Al Gore had lied and reversed the uh, graphs. Uh, and they're still up there saying polar bears can't swim on CNN. That they're all dead, basically, when their numbers are fivefold. So, Lord Moncton, in, in the 10 minutes we've got left with you, I appreciate you joining us today. Uh, I want to get into how they're striking back, what you expect them to do. Because even though this is all a fraud, they still brainwash the kids. They're still putting carbon taxes. They're still moving in major cities in the U.S. to put you in coffin size. Uh, apartments 200 square feet and charge you huge carbon city taxes. I mean, they're still going forward even though they've been caught as frauds. This is exactly the thing. These people do not know when they ought to let go. And this could be the end of worldwide bureaucratic centralist socialism, communism, fascism, call it what you like. The idea that governments know best, the bureaucrats know best, that idea has now been proven false by the fact that they called this global warming the most certain thing they'd ever said. It was all, the science was certain, it's all settled, it's all over. It now turns out they were 180 degrees wrong. Every single fact they told us about was incorrect. Adding carbon dioxide to an atmosphere like ours will be expected to cause some warming. That's well understood and has been for a couple of hundred years. But here's the point. What isn't well understood, as they've now found out, is how much, or rather, how little warming that carbon dioxide is actually going to cause. We now know that it's not causing very much. No warming at all for 17 years, and not much likelihood of it. And you were talking, Alex, quite rightly about the sun. Let me tell you what's happened to the sun. 
300 years ago, it went through 70 years when there was virtually no sunspots. Now, that hasn't happened like that for 11,400 years since the end of the last ice age. It was really cold then. The Hudson in New York, the Thames over here in the UK, froze over in the winter. They had frost fairs on the Thames. A Dutch artists came who did landscapes. They came and painted them. You can get the pictures in the National Gallery. We know that it was cold then. Then the sun began to become active again, and from 1695 to 1735, a period of 40 years, the warming happened so rapidly, not only in England, but we think right around the world, that global temperatures will have risen at a rate equivalent to four Celsius degrees or six and a half Fahrenheit degrees per century, a real rapid warming before the Industrial Revolution began. Nothing to do with us. The sun went on gathering its activity. So we've now had 300 years of global warming. And of course, it's warmer now than it was in 1695 because it's been getting warmer all that time. And you would expect the warmer weather to be at the end of that period, not at the beginning. Nothing unusual about that. Point is, though, that that warming seems to have stopped. The sun reached a peak of activity in 1960, a peak almost as high as it reached at any time in the last 11,400 years. So the sun suddenly a lot more active, and now it's begun to decline, and to decline quite a bit. Result, even though we've added some carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, even though that has no doubt contributed a little bit to global warming, it hasn't in the last 17 years, because the sun is now in decline again, and it's the sun. Of course it's the sun, stupid, as you so rightly said, Alex. That's what dominates the climate. That, after all, is where the heat comes from. There's just that little bit less heat coming from the sun than there usually is, and already the global temperatures are responding. The bureaucrats and the scientists got it wrong. They were overconfident. They wanted our money and our taxes and control over our lives just too much to stand back and be rational and get this one right and produce balanced reports. They're still at it. This fifth big assessment report by the UN's climate panel, here it comes again with all the same rubbish in it. They're now claiming 95% confidence that more than half of the global warming since 1950 was caused by us. But here's the thing, Alex. There's been about 0.7 Celsius degrees or one Fahrenheit, just over one Fahrenheit of global warming over the whole of the last uh, 63 years since 1950. And that means that in absolute terms, the temperature of the Earth has changed, get this, by one quarter of one percent. One quarter of one percent is the total warming of the Earth in absolute terms since 1950. That's all. Is that something extreme? Is that something worrying? Is that something that's doing damaging? No, of course it's not. It's entirely within what is called the natural variability of the climate. Now, Lord Moncton... had something to do with that, but not much. Sure, sure, Lord Moncton. Our listeners follow uh, scienceofpublicpolicy.org. They're aware that... You didn't use lies to counter their lies. You used truth, and I don't know how you've gotten it so incredibly right. For folks that haven't followed it, you are a scientist in your own right, journalist, uh, advised Margaret Thatcher on national policy, really her top advisor, it's been reported. Uh, so you're a really smart guy in your own right. You don't toot your horn. So, so we understand their frauds. I want to ask you how you expect them to strike back and how you think we should counter them because uh, they don't care. They're just moving forward. So what do we do? I mean, look at all the people that have called for your arrest. They've, they've called for my arrest. They've said uh, that we need green fascism. Uh, they've, they've sued countless scientists that didn't agree with them. Uh, and I don't expect these, I mean, look at David Attenborough coming out and saying last week that we need to starve the third world. Uh, I mean, these people know they're not really liberals. They, they're conscious. Malthusian eugenicists. So how do we counter such a vicious group? I think the first thing is we turn the tables on them. They have been threatening to put us on trial for what are called high crimes against humanity. The penalty for that, of course, is death. But we are not the people doing the killing here. We are not the people who have been putting energy prices up so that people are dying of the cold in their homes because they can't afford to turn the heating up here in the winter in Scotland. We don't do that. They do. So I think we turn the tables on them. There is a law. And the law says that if you commit fraud, 
by deliberately deceiving people on a matter such as a scientific question like global warming and either you make money out of it yourselves or and it could be either you make other people suffer loss and come to harm because of the fraud the deception that you have caused then you can go to jail for that for a very long time and that's what we've now got to do for instance if somebody comes along and says it's a 97.1 percent consensus that global warming um, over the last 60 years is mostly caused by us. And the actual figures in the papers that they surveyed, marked by them, is that it's only 0.3%, 0.5%, some tiny fraction like that. And they're trying to say it's 97.1%. Well, there's only one word for that, Alex, isn't there? And there's only one place that people who perpetrate fraud like that, let's use the word, fraud is what it is. There's only one place where people like that ought to go, and it is the Calabozo. And they should go there for quite a long time, because they are doing real harm to not just the economy of the West, but to the livelihoods and lives of people who depend on getting affordable energy and now they can't afford it because the prices have been put up to subsidize these bird blending back blatting windmills that generate practically no electricity destabilize the grid and cost a fortune doing it now lord Frankly, Monkton, uh, yeah. has come to bring this nonsense to a very firm end in the courts you know i think you're being too kind to him because if you look at the mainstream news the admissions that the scientists met with the un the german government the u.s government and others and said we've got to cover this up to get money, I mean, that's beyond fraud. That's organized criminal meetings to to defraud people. You're right, it's fraud, but it's beyond just knowingly lying to people. As you said, it's to get money. And, and even if they could say they didn't know before and they were just wrong, it's the premeditated meeting to now cover it up when it involves government bodies uh, this sounds like uh, organized uh, conspiracy to me, and that's a serious felony. I know our law is based on UK law, uh, based on old English law. Uh, I mean, what's what's the specifics here? I mean, we need to move immediately to have them clapped in irons. Well, I think you have in the United States a law that goes beyond even our law. You have the racketeer-influenced corrupt organizations law, the RICO statute. You've probably seen the film, the black and white film about Rico, who got caught in the end, the organized gangster, the hood. These people are hoods. And you're quite right. At a recent meeting in Stockholm, where they were deciding on the final form of the IPCC's latest blockbuster report about the climate, a UN report, the Germans, as well as the Hungarians, came out and said that they didn't want anyone admitting there's been no global warming for 17 years, because if that was admitted, then it might mean the skeptics would prevail. And the last thing they want is to allow the truth to come through. So they deliberately tried to suppress it. And when you do that at government level, you openly call for real world data to be suppressed in the way that we saw data were being suppressed at the University of East Anglia and many other universities, the University of Colorado and States, the University of Virginia, the Penn State University, all these places where they've been bending the data, destroying the data, hiding the data, fiddling the data. All of these people working together, as we know they did, via the Climate Gate 10,000 emails where we caught them talking to each other about suppressing papers they didn't like, delaying their publication in the journals, preventing their publication in the journals, doing them down, having their chance. This is authoritarianism persecution. Talking. This is authoritarianism, just like we have the IRS caught being ordered to harass Tea Party groups. I mean, th th point. these are exactly. real authoritarians. It is exactly that, and the point is, they think, and they still think, that they can get away with this because they are the government or they have the support of the government. But certainly in the British courts, and I still think in one or two of the American courts, there are judges there who are sufficiently independent-minded that if you went to them, as we did with Al Gore's movie, to the High Court in London, and even though we had a judge who had once been a candidate for the then governing Labour Party, and we put in front of him the fact of the errors all the way through Gore's movie, he found that if they hadn't agreed to publish 77 pages 
of corrective guidance to Gore's movie circulated to every school in England, then the education department, the government department in charge of education in this country would not have been allowed to show that movie. We won in court because that's where the bullshit stops. Once they realize that they're going to be in court and they're going to be in a forum where both sides are fairly heard, where they don't command the judge and control the judge in the way they command and control the mainstream media. That's the moment when they realise, as they did then, the moment they saw the scientific testimony, all 80 pages of it, that I had drafted in that case, they took one look at that and they caved in because they knew they couldn't lie in front of the judge or we would have pointed the lies out and they would have gone to jail for perjury. So they suddenly had to fess up and tell the truth and after months of pretending to us in the answers to our pleadings that they were telling the truth, they suddenly admitted they weren't, that Gore's film was indeed full of errors and they apologised for it and said voluntarily, that they would issue 77 pages of corrective guidance. And only then did the judge allow the film right. to be shown, and he awarded $400,000 in costs to the plaintiff, a lorry driver from Dartford whose two kids in school did not want to be propagandised. If you want my guess, this is now going to move from the civil court where that was to a criminal court, and we are going to start seeing people all over the world prosecuted for one or two very specific instances of serious criminal fraud. Tampering with data, publishing the wrong results, being told they've published the wrong results and refusing to withdraw them upon the, the error being drawn to their attention. And that is deception, that is fraud. I think we're now going to start seeing just one or two prosecutions. That's all it's going to take, Alex. You put a couple of scientists behind bars who thought that their white coats and their fancy degrees from posh universities made them somehow immune from prosecution from the same fraud laws that apply to the rest of us. When they get that real surprise, and find out that if they do deliberately bogus scientific research and deliberately refuse to correct it when they're caught out, if they find that they can go to jail for that just like you and me, the rest of them will gallop for cover. And that, and only then, that will be the end of the scandal. And I want to be specific. None of us want to put them in jail, but they're authoritarians who've been lying. And if they get the global carbon taxes, many conservative estimates, I know, or a billion would die in a decade, we're trying to stop some very dangerous Malthusians who are on record, many of them being eugenicists. And it's a very, very creepy to see them getting away with this. I mean, I see cases all the time where green police now, they have all over the country, uh, state police, you name it, find a battery in your yard that fell out of one of your children's toys and you're given a $10,000 fine. Or the case of the man charged with felonies for endangering the environment, for letting go a heart balloon for his girlfriend in Florida. Last time I read that prosecution is going forward. They admit this is going to be their new selective prosecution against the public. These are ravenous authoritarians who want to bring in a reign of socialist, communistic terror on the public. I mean, they've had you beaten up going to events you're accredited to. They've, they've called for your arrest. It's on video. Police punching you in the back of the head for no reason. I mean, I've been around these people as well. They know it's all a fraud. And they, they, they are. Know, we know. They know the game is up. I was in Australia earlier this year on a four month speaking tour. I met farmers in South Australia. And one of these farmers had a really interesting story to tell. They came and hid behind his shed for days. And they eventually spotted him taking water from his neighbor's creek and using it to uh, supply his cattle who needed water. And they swooped in a pickup truck. They knocked him over and injured him. They damaged both his physical and his, his mental health. Then while he was still in hospital recovering from- Hold on, I gotta hear this on the other side, then we'll go into overdrive and take calls from Obamanoid supporters, 800-25-99231. The Alex Jones Channel is the official page of the Info War, but don't miss what's happening on our other channels. The Info Warrior with the week's best videos. Prison Planet Live, where Paul Joseph Watson gives his expert analysis. And keep up with the rest of the InfoWars crew on our other pages. All of our videos are available to repost for educational purposes. 
See the sidebar of the Alex Jones channel for the subscription links. And remember, you can always find our videos in the highest quality by becoming a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. By the way, folks, we've rolled out InfoWarsLife.com where you can get the nascent atomic level iodine that is so good for your thyroid. They've taken that out of the salt and things, and there's so many people with uh, thyroid problems uh, directly linked. All the literature shows one of the biggest issues is not having the, the healthy iodine, not the regular stuff at the store. That'll make you sick, folks. This is the, this is the uh, nascent atomic iodine. Look into it. All the details, links to studies up at InfoWarsLife.com. Dot com. We're going to be adding more amazing products uh, developed with Dr. Group there on the site in the near future. And you get great prices on it and also support the broadcast. You can also call toll free 888-253-3139. And all the other great products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine 2.0, Pollen Burst uh, Plus, and so much more available at InfoWarsHealth.com. And all the books, films, t-shirts, everything. Uh, water filters, you name it, shopping with the good guys, funds the liberty movement through the free market, through voluntary, uh, uh, you know, action, through free will, through free association. You support our news operation by shopping at InfoWarsStore.com. Unlike NPR and all the other government-run media and the BBC that keeps pushing all the climate change lies, who gets taxpayer money, we are supported by listeners like you. So thank you so much, and be sure and support our AM and FM affiliates. Lord Monkton, I want to finish the story on the uh, farmers and the people being attacked, especially in Australia that's the farthest along in all this, where you just spent months. But then I want to briefly talk about socialist health care, what it's like living under it in England, the UK, and Scotland. Go ahead, Lord Monckton. Dead right. Let's start then, first of all, with this case in Australia of the farmer taking water from his own neighbor's creek. The neighbor was, was happy with that. He had an agreement with the neighbor. It turned out... He also had permission in writing from the government to do that, but they didn't care. They made a mistake. They drove him down in their ute, three of them. They left him for dead. They drove away. They got to the court before he did, and they said he'd been taking water illegally. The court, without hearing his side of the case, fined him $35,000. And this is what you're talking about, these savage fines. He, however, being a tough, independent-minded Australian farmer, simply refused to pay. So the court hauled him up again and said, right, you've got to do 360 hours community service. And here's the thing, Alex, gradually the bureaucrats themselves are realizing this just isn't right. And so when he turned up for his community service, they said, no, just quietly go away. We won't tell the judge if you don't. You needn't do that service. It's clear that you have been harshly treated, that you have done no wrong. Go away and God bless you. So there is some humanity creeping back into the system. I'm delighted to see it. And of course, we also know that in Australia, Tony Abbott, to whom I gave detailed briefings on climate change many years ago, and who has said that it's rubbish. He used a slightly blunter word than that, but he said it's rubbish. Um, he has now become the prime minister of Australia. He has already shut down the lying, fiddling Climate Commission, which was putting out propaganda and calling itself independent. And you should hear the moaning and bedwetting by the BBC and all these other organisations, the ABC, about how terrible it was that this so-called independent commission that was pushing out propaganda for the Labour government that's now been defeated has been swept away. Great so news. One minute, one minute, one minute, sir, on government-run health care, the nightmare we're facing. By all means, we have government-run health care in the United Kingdom, and Rannoch, which is where my little estate is, is one of the first places in Britain where the National Health Service is no longer national. After hours and at weekends, if you get a heart attack, you die. The doctor will not come, because the nearest doctor is two hours away, and there aren't even any ambulances to get you to the doctor or him to you. They've already begun shutting it down piece by piece because the money for it has run out. And here's the thing, you're just starting with socialist medicine. And the effect that you will have, it'll run out even faster with you because you've already got no money in the bank. Obama has spent it all. The national debt in the United States has now doubled since Obama first... Incredible. Lord Moncton, thank you so much. Godspeed to your great work.
Alex Jones here to warn you about some of the most important health information you may ever hear. I'm talking about radiation, radioactive fallout, radioactive particles contaminating the Northern Hemisphere. Conservatively, since the 1940s, the Northern Hemisphere of our planet has more than doubled its background radiation. In fact, that was before Fukushima exploded. Now the levels are going up and up and up. Fish are contaminated in the Pacific, and the FDA, the EPA, and others, they're not worried about it. They've been raising the levels of what they claim is safe radioactive particles. Well, I began to discuss with my wife protecting myself, her, and of course our children. Most importantly, I have three small children, ages 10, 9, and 5. Radiation really affects children more than adults because they have fast-growing cells. All the literature is clear on that. And I went and talked to medical doctors, scientists, nuclear physicists, nutritionists, and I said, what's the number one thing I can do to protect my family? And they said, Alex, it's leave the northern hemisphere. Go south of the equator. That's where the radiation levels are very, very low. If you look at the wind patterns, the north hardly interacts with the south. And it's unfortunate that we've done this to our planet. So after more than two years of research into how to protect my family, looking at all the literature, talking to the experts, across the board they agreed, iodine is key, but of the family of iodine, nascent, natural, non-GMO, non-factory iodine that comes from the earth is absolutely paramount for your thyroid and other functions in the body. The literature, the research, it's there. It's not my opinion. It is admitted that iodine is essential for the health of our bodies overall, and nascent iodine is the best form. Now, we're announcing the launch of InfoWarsLife.com, and we're going to bring you scores of products over the next few years that we're researching and developing. But nascent iodine is the first product we're coming out with because it's so important, and it's also listed as a fluoride detoxer. It does so many other things. Your body needs it, and when you don't have enough iodine, forget the radiation, your thyroid absorbs the sodium fluoride and other things. And it's the good iodine, the nascent iodine, that is able to block that and just do so many things uh, for your body and your health. I've been taking it. It's amazing. It's a lot better than coffee, I'm here to tell you. And that's why we are now offering our own nascent iodine that's double the strength, made in the best laboratory that is uh, FDA uh, certified and accredited. And it is double strength at half the price of the leading competitor. You know my rule. Bring you the highest quality products at the lowest prices we can so it's a win-win-win. I believe in you reap what you sow. So not only will you get the best deal on nascent iodine at InfoWarsLife.com for your general health and also for any type of emergencies or disasters, you will also be getting a great deal and supporting the InfoWar and our news operation, promoting the cure for tyranny, the First Amendment, promoting liberty and a rediscovery of the Bill of Rights and Constitution and true Americana that's made this nation so great. So please join me in being among the first to visit InfoWarsLife.com. We've got discounts if you buy the nascent iodine in bulk. I challenge you to try to find a better deal. We have the best deal out there and the best quality. In closing, here is probably the most important point. You don't just take nascent iodine when disaster strikes, when there's some new giant disaster. The Northern Hemisphere is already double what it was 60 years ago with the radioactive background. I believe from the research I've done and the experts I've talked to, it is key to take nascent iodine to protect your thyroid from the radiological disaster that's already happened and unfortunately future disasters that will happen. That's why it's important to fill your thyroid up now with the healthy nascent iodine so that the sodium fluoride, the radioactive isotopes, and the rest of it can't get in. That's the key. This is something that across the board has been shown in study after study to be an absolutely essential nutrient in the body. Until a few decades ago, the government put it in the salt because they knew you needed it. But then they took that out that's good for the thyroid and put the sodium fluoride in that's bad for it. Talk about eugenics, talk about soft kill, talk about an invisible weapon in the water supply. This stuff 
is on record as a detoxifier for the fluoride they're adding to our water. Nascent iodine and InfoWars Life Survival Shield in double strength at half the cost of the leading competitors. Please visit InfoWarsLife.com today. <laughs> Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happened. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show.